Hello everybody, my name is Aceface. This is a continuation of the previous video I made which I discussed my thought process and how I construct a high sec combat exploration fit. So this is more like a video of showing the fit in action or the thought process in action where we go and do some basic sites and I explain how this has gone into practice. So a quick summary of the previous video of the theory behind uh, our previous fit was that we use a fit that is able to warp fast because we're going to be warping from system to system to system a lot. Then at the same time we want to have something that is able to apply really well. What's the reason for this? Well it's because in these high sec sites where you look for DD escalations, the refuges and hideaways primarily, uh, you usually or pretty much only encounter small ships so that's why you want to have a good amount of application application is key here because you can have a lot of dps but if you're not able to apply it then it doesn't actually mean anything and you're especially beneficial in these kinds of sites because they are low hp targets it's not like they're, they're small targets but they're very low hp so just get a tiny bit of dps is able to apply well you're going to have a good time you're going to be able to take them out really quickly even if you have just like 200 dps or 100 dps you will still do them actually pretty quickly as you can see here we've got 200 dps this is going to feel really smooth when we're doing this we are using actually even a character that's only trained alpha clone based skills so we could potentially be even better this is the similar fit that i did before but i've modified it slightly so the whole idea behind this is that we're going with a small ship such as a destroyer. A destroyer is going to be able to lock stuff up quickly, warp around quickly and it's going to be able to apply really well. Then we have guns that are able to instantly hit the target so it's not like a missile based ship that is going to take a bit of time from when you launch the missile to hitting the target so you're going to be able to like apply needle hitting damage straight away and then We've also got a decent amount of range. It's good to have some range because then you don't have to move around. And in fact, I made this fit to not even have a propulsion module because the idea here is that we just warp in, snipe stuff and peace out because we're going to be able to destroy stuff so quickly. So here we have some targets that are a little bit far away. So this could be an idea where we could have gone for an afterburner or a longer range ship. This is something I actually didn't take into consideration. So you always get new ideas of improvements to your fit when you've actually tried it. That, that's something that is really important when it comes to these sites as well. You can make a fit. In theory, it can sound really good, like it'll work really well. But you never know for sure until you've actually tested it. And then you know that what you can improve upon, what you can't improve upon. As you can see here, it's really smooth. I just lock stuff up straight away and that's it. Even though there's a Cerberus here, who is a really powerful ship, a lot more expensive than us lot more damage than us the thing is this guy he's probably also he's a mega clone because you need to be an omega clone to be able to fly a cerberus even then we're able to sort of outcompete him you could say we were able to destroy all these four targets when we warped here in a bit of the delay that's because he locks up stuff slower than us his missiles take time to hit the target and overall he's going to be probably applying less than us so generally speaking, we're going to have a very easy time doing these, even though we're using a tiny little Tech 1 destroyer that is pretty cheap. It does this so well because you need some needle striking damage, like really like focused damage that hits fast. Then you'll have a good time here. As you saw before also, I was able to just one shot these targets. So it's not like I need to have like a really big amount of DPS. It's all about just hitting the target as quick as possible. And that is what's going to help you succeed in these because you'll be able to do them a lot quicker. And it's really important to be able to do these sites quickly because the quicker you do these, the more you get through per time unit, the more amount of roles you can have to potentially get the DED escalation sites. So we saw on the agency tab that in this adjacent system of Itama, we had a few here, hideaway and refuge. So we'll go for the refuge. The refuge is the more difficult site we will be going for and this ship is equipped with tank it's got a decent amount of tank two field extenders a medium shield extender and small shield extenders basically i'm making this fit to be a passive shield fit that is able to okay we can't seem to do this because someone probably has already destroyed this refuge here but i mean equipping a decent amount of tank not a whole lot of tank it can obviously 
be more if you were to bling it but uh, i'll just try and put as much tank as i could fill in to be able to have as much dps as possible i put some vortex compact magnetic field stabilizers to be honest i could have perhaps weakened the tank a bit and put some tech 2 ones but these are actually cheaper require less skills and i think they fit a lot better as well so it, it gives me an easier time you can see here we've got these targets here sideways now there are people who are nearby so they're going to be very likely out competing us but you can see there's a jackdaw over here and we can see if we're able to hit him nope we're not able to hit him and there is a reason for this guy actually being able to out compete us i think it was the jackdaw and this is again with being able to hit the targets as quick as possible even though i mentioned that missiles before are perhaps not the best for this you can't I align to this even though it's yeah, strange uh, the thing is, many people, they do use jackdaws for this kind of high-sec exploration activity. And the reason is because they put auto-targeting missiles on. And even though auto-targeting missiles do a fraction of the DPS as regular missiles, they actually help a lot in doing damage fast because you do not even have to lock up your target to begin with to be able to do damage to the NPCs. And that's really beneficial because you think of what I've been always saying to you before, being able to lock up stuff quick and just do damage straight away is the key here well one of the best ways to promote this theory is to just not even have to lock up anything that's great then you can just do damage straight away so that's why a missile ship such as the jackdaw is able to prevail really well there because even though missiles take a bit of time to hit the target they still bypass completely the lock time and were able to outcompete us as we saw here they were able to destroy get the ship destroyed before we were even, even able to lock them up. Now, you can benefit your lock time, for example, by training skills. If we go here on the skill tab, skill catalog, if we go on the scanning, if we go on the targeting, then you've got all these uh, sensor compensations here and you want to train up these sensor compensation skills uh, that are relevant to your race. So say for example, I'm in Kaldari. I believe that is not Ladar. I think it might be Radar. We can always check that by right-clicking on our ship and looking at your ship here and attributes. And then you look here in targeting and you can see that it's got gravimetric sensor strength. So that's what we'll want to train to be able to lock up better or faster with the ship we've got. So this is what I mean, where you're sitting here, don't even have to move a lot. You just attack them straight away, boom, and boom. So what you can do here to destroy these even faster is group them or ungroup them and then hold down left shift and just drag them to like an equal group on each other. So like this. There we go, we've got two groups. This is very nice when you've got multiple targets. You can just quickly assign one group to the other one like this and then just sit back and relax and have it take care of the NPCs. Now, I didn't one-shot them because these guys are destroyers. Yeah, destroyers have a bit more HP than the frigates, but if you have better skills and even a better ship, you could definitely one-shot these kinds of destroyers that we've got here. Easy. So as you can see, these high sex sites, they're baby easy. There's not really much to them, to be honest, but there's the small kind of niche aspects here and there that can help you do these a lot quicker than I initially thought when I started playing the game because initially I was thinking always just put as much DPS on the ship as possible and then it'll go really well but you can use a drake for example that is 800 DPS and it'll do this slower than my alpha clone cormorant here with 200 DPS it's just all about application lock time and being able to do damage as fast as possible as well as being able to warp from system to system the same way we're doing here. You can see we're able to warp to this next hide hideaway a lot quicker than, say, a Drake would be, because smaller ships, generally speaking, warp faster than larger ones. That's why, say, a ship such as the Pacifier. The Pacifier is perhaps not a really great ship for doing a lot of damage. Uh, you can see here, if we go in this Pacifier, this one here, this won't do a whole lot of damage, it does some damage but not a whole lot uh, but it can still be equipped with small weapons that apply really well then you're able to apply really well you're able to do these sites really quickly you can just one shot them as you can see here and but the main thing with this ship is that it's got really fast warp speed you can see 8 au per second look at the cormorant 4.5 au per second 
The pacifier is pretty special because it's got really fast warping speed. Okay, take out him, take out him, and take out him. You see how easy it is when you've got multiple groups? You can just quickly lock everything up like it's no one's business and take care of them like that. One shot, one shot, and one shot. And then you've done the hideaway like that. So now, on this ship in particular, or this fit, I did not bother fitting a core probe launcher because, me personally, I think that scanning for these signatures is not the most interesting activity. But you could definitely do that, and I think you should actually do that if you want to get more DD escalations. I just personally think that they're boring. Otherwise, I think you will benefit from finding more DD sites this way by scanning. Because if we were to turn, tone down the tank somehow, you could probably fit in a core probe launcher here. That's a good thing about this cormorant here is that it's got a spare high slot that you could fit a core probe launcher. But what you could do is, maybe not when you're doing these hideaways, because these hideaways, they take a really little amount of time to do. But when you're saying a big one, such as a den or a refuge, I would not recommend doing a den in this ship. I think that it might die. We could try doing the den and see if it works, but I don't think it's going to go too well. We have, however, got a Cerberus in the system, so he might help us a bit. But uh, the refuges, they do take a bit longer time to do than this hideaway. And you could then scan at the same time. So then you're not wasting time doing scanning. It's not like hindering you for doing more sites. You can maybe put the the scanning tab like here, make it a bit smaller, for example. And put it here on the side or here somewhere. And you can just lock up in the meantime. You can always do that. And between scan cycles, just blap some NPCs. No problem. Especially when you got three signatures, you know, one of them could may as well be a 4 out of 10 DD site. You can see here, we've got some more more players here. So look, you see we've got the Cerberus. I think the Cerberus has got auto-targeting missiles as well because he's splitting all the uh, the missiles. But actually, no, I don't think he, I think he's just split the groups like we've got. But he's just has splitting them to different targets. That's why he was shooting many different targets at the same time. But... This ship here, you see the Cormorant, we're able to dish out a lot of punishment even though we've got a fraction of this guy's DPS just because we're able to apply really well and lock up very fast. You can see, look, just look at the wrecks here. Right, look, we just we came here after him and we're able to recover much more wrecks than he is. And this is all because of what I mentioned before. Like This is a perfect example, I would say, is that when you have like a really big beefy ship versus a more weaker twitchier ship like the cormorant this is why i prefer to have these kinds of ships over those kinds of ships but these are good but for these activities i think that maybe they're not the most useful so you see here we've got so many more wrecks than this guy here he's not able to capture basically any wrecks he's only got four wrecks meanwhile we've got like eight and it's not because he's bad he's definitely not bad can tell by his like he's got just got a Cerberus so he must be a pretty experienced player with good skin and all that kind of stuff it's just that we have a more suitable ship for this kind of anomaly here can just pre shoot here and we just almost destroy them straight away I just need to put land a few volleys and boom they go down and the last volley here you could even put a battleship an even bigger comparison that is going to lock stuff even longer than a Cerberus and you'll still get this done much smoother than the battleship. So that's a bit of showing the exploration fits I come up with in practice and how I would motivate going for the certain design choices I do when finding these kinds of fits. Uh, when uh, coming up with these kinds of fits how important it is to be able to lock up stuff fast, move fast and have a decent amount of range and being able to track really well. This helps you so much outcompete other people. And there are also some exceptions here and there. Like I said, that maybe missiles, they don't necessarily have to be a weapon of choice. They have a bit of a travel time to the target. You can also bypass that by using auto-targeting missiles. Auto-targeting missiles, however, have the downside of not going for targets that have not locked you up or aggressed against you. So say you warp in afterwards, like I did here. I warped in after this guy locked in here, uh, warped in here, then the auto-targeting missiles wouldn't work because probably nothing would lock us up as much as it was if we were initially there. So I preferably like to use guns, long-range guns, like the rail guns or beam lasers, etc. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you at least learned something new. How I come up with exploration ships, combat exploration ships in practice. If you did enjoy the video, if you did at least learn something new, could you please leave a like and subscribe? 
I'll catch you guys later.